Hello, welcome to Mark Langley's Horsemanship Podcast, a podcast helping people to understand their horses better, to provide solutions in a calm, connected way. I'm Jenny Barnes. And I'm Mark Langley. Hi, Mark. I'm going to hit you with some questions on float loading, trailer loading. First one comes from Kim. And she has a horse that has slipped over on the ramp. She's in the UK. It gets a lot of rain there and the ramp's um, been slippery and wet. So since that slip, she'll put her front all the way up on the ramp, but those hinds just stay off the ramp on the ground. She says you can see the tension and anxiety rise in her. She won't cross her comfort threshold. And she's worked on this for hours, backwards, forwards, until she's soft and willing. And then they hit that threshold. She says she does have anger, which starts to mount. And she runs through all these defences. She plants her feet. She runs off to the side. She rears, she swings, and she kicks out. She has also seen that kind of behaviour coming out a little bit during groundwork with her and in her field. Um, so she chooses to walk over to her and inspect the fence or something. or And she makes the decision to move rather than the horse. So um, obviously there's something else that's going on a little bit there as well. She's not hard to catch. Um, but she's just wondering, you know, if you've got any advice, especially with that intimidating behaviour and helping her to get her confidence back on the ramp. Yeah, um, the most common, like, I'll help a lot of horses with loading. Like every clinic, there's always horses that I'll sort of help that get stuck on a ramp. And and one of the biggest, you know, standing in a horse float after they've had an accident, they'll, they'll spread out their hind feet, they'll brace, and they'll just kind of lift their head up and won't move. And we just did a, you know, just um, there were some other questions recently and just another podcast that you'll, you'll probably be listening to that I'd suggest you listen to as well, which is about, you know, there were questions about backing up. And they're going to be also very important um, to some of the answers in freeing up your horse. So, you know, the, the being able to, um, you know, lead a horse softly and so the horse is well balanced when they go backwards and forwards is so important because that enables them to walk softly so it's our job to get soft movement, not just sort of the horse kind of feeling light forwards and backwards, but slightly elevated, careful footsteps where the horse is really thinking about each foot placement softly. And that's that's some of our responsibility in teaching horses to lead so they can then um, load on a ramp better and walk uh, walk better and um, qu- more quietly on, on sort of, you know, scary surfaces um, and enables them to sort of explore scary surfaces with um, a lot more confidence with their feet. So so that all happens in, in good quality leading. But the other thing that really I, I, I believe probably doesn't get done enough is putting our horses under a little bit more pressure, pressure raising the bar. So you've got to think about it. A horse uh, has an accident on a horse float like yours on the ramp, slipping, then it's suddenly just set up to be really frightened and doesn't want to go on the ramp. So that ramp, almost made all that pressure and made it frightening. But by the sounds of it, your horse is also um, getting to a certain threshold in groundwork and starting to sort of argue with with you. And I'm not sure exactly how you're doing your groundwork, so I can't really sort of, you know, go into detail on that. But um, uh, a little story, I'll explain some of what, some of the answer in this little story. Just the the last clinic I did, there was a sort of horse, it's a real head-throwing, bracy horse, So I just went away from the float and I just kept tapping into his brace and I had the flag and I was popping it and I was pushing him and pushing him back into the pressure until he could start to release. And then all of a sudden he released all his brace and then I brought him back to the float and he was loading very softly as in he was really moving softly and he connected with the float. He sniffed it all over and, but his main thing was his brace and he was, there was a big brace in him. But what I did is I didn't just go to forwards and backwards. I actually provoked him a little bit. So I provoked a bit of that, oh, 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 oh I'm going to push back and I'm going to fight a little. And I said, no, can you follow this feel softly until he only had, you know, he could work under a bit of pressure. So so when you're doing your forwards and backwards away from your float, something I encourage is really, you know, pushing your horse back a little faster and then saying, come forward now, go back, back, come forward now. And really say, come forward. There's, this is not a question. Um, this is a This is a request. And... Um, uh, you need to come forward at the speed this lead rope's coming forward. And you, and you really sort of provoke them a bit, provoke them to pull back a little bit and say that's not available until away from the float, you can move your leading hand as quick as you like at any speed and the horse is willing to come with that. 
Now, why we do that is, um, and, and it's exactly the same for riding horses, why we do that is at the ramp, if the horse suddenly decides to pull back, then the rope's going to pull tight quickly, uh, quicker than it's used to, than when you, if you're asking it in a certain nice rhythm, um, and they're going to get a fright. So, so it's important that we step them up a little bit. So I, I think um, when you're working with your horse, stepping it up a little bit in the learning environment and and getting a bit more serious about that come forward now no 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 shutting out sometimes if they go la 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 and they shut out that's when i'll just put a little flag up in the air and i'll just move it around and give it a little pop like just a little plastic bag flag with a, you know something that gets that's got a little bit of noise to it and they'll kind of go oh whoa, whoa, and they'll wake up out of that sort of freezy shut down space but for everyone don't just go and do that with every single horse because it might be too much and too much neither you know so so you got to you got to pick pick those things, and as I say, it's just enough to get them to stop shutting down. So when you see the eyes glaze over, you know you might even just bang your leg, and the horse will go oh oh oh, and then start to search and wriggle, and then come with that feel again. So the, you can interrupt the horse's thoughts through distraction like that, whilst you're asking them to to you know go backwards and forwards, especially if they've locked up on you, and that's that freeze response you're trying to unlock. Um, the other thing I do encourage is, is, is going into the hindquarter yields. So what, what I like to do, there's a lesson where I pick up the horses and I rock them backwards and forwards and then I get them to come by me and I'll twist the rein and get the hindquarter to move over and I'll get that hindquarter so soft in my leading hand that I can put a twist on that horse at the float ramp and, and rock them backwards and forwards and they can move their hind all the way around one way and then I'll swap them on the other hand and they'll move their hind all around the other way. So you can actually get them to move their hindquarter just by by you know holding them underneath the chin now that takes a little bit of practice but i tell you what once you've got that sorted that you can lift up uh loosen them in the base of the neck lift there with a rock them backwards and forwards put a little twist in the rein and that hindquarter just floats over sideways um then 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 you can take that brace out of that hindquarter and get them free again and then walk backwards and forwards so so you know say if the horse was kind of bracing near the ramp with its hind feet I go rock back forward, back forward, rock it back. If it's bracing in the hind feet, I'd probably push it back to start with to get it moving, and then I'd bring it forward. But I'd actually instigate a bit of a hindquarter yield. Even if it got the horse a little crooked to the ramp, you said free up the back feet. So as soon as you put a press, uh, a twist on that rope, the, the hind feet free up. Practice that a lot away from the ramp till you can, can do it really, really well. And that's just another thing to get that horse to free up. And once that horse frees up the hind feet, don't ask it to walk any further onto the ramp. Just back it back and just say thank you for that. Get it close to where it freezes the hind feet. Get the hind feet to free up a little bit and take, you know, just take it back and do something else and then come up again. And then once the, once the horse gets out of that initial brace of freezing in the hind feet, you might get it to, to take a step forward and a think forward and just let it think about the float. So that's where you loosen up, let it sniff the ramp, do all that sort of thing. Um, and just direct your attention to the brace. Once the brace frees up uh, and the horse unlocks, then you'll give it some time to think in the float to get more confident with the ramp that it's about to go up. And just keep working on that. Um, but as I say, go back and, and sometimes just step it up as well too before you get near the float. Get those hindquarters working nice and... Um, and then you'll, 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 you know, have a lot more tools in there to help your horse. And then the other thing about getting his confidence on the ramp, once you've got the, the brace sorted out and the leading a lot better and under pressure, the leading a lot better, then you're going to sort of grade the exposure a little bit as get the horse on and back it off a little bit on and off and, and just like up a little bit back off, up a little bit back off until it's really loose in every part of it. And then there'll be times that you just let it stand and think about the float and just, um, and yeah, it, it, it'll be a bit of a, a slow process because it's already had an accident. But if you work on that, you'll, you'll certainly make some headway. Okay, that sounds really helpful to Carolyn as well, who's got a similar situation. Um, she's been watching all of your float loading videos. But the issue that she has most difficult is that he plants his feet and he won't move his feet regardless of what she does with the lead rope. So this is despite moving him backwards and forwards so that he steps onto the ramp and off it. Um, but he just seems to get this brace that she can't get out of and she can get him to follow the lead without the float. That's sort of fine. But once he gets to the float, then there's this brace. Um, mm. He doesn't also react to the flag. And when she tries to bring his attention into the side, inside the float, he just disassociates. The only thing that will change his thought is food. So have you got any thoughts to help her with that one? Yeah, um, with that one, with the um, 
that that happens quite a lot. They see the float in front of them and they block it out. And by the sounds of it, he can block out the flag as well. So, you know, he's he's one of those horses that just goes la 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 la. Um, and and just like you know what I was talking about with the last horses, step it up. Like there's a point in training when the float's not there that you that you sort of um, you, you you get a bit more urgency on your leading. Uh, I'm running late. I'm urgent. I'm urgent in this backwards and forwards and wake them up a little bit so yeah. they're really awake in that lead rope and um, thinking about it without 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 you know hiding them up that they're so frightened. But they have to have that that little bit of awareness and urgency when you start to lead them because it becomes urgent when the horse accidentally has a pullback or you know gets a fright or something and then when then suddenly there's urgency and and and, and um, a bit of anxiety in the situation yet they flip out because they can't cope with it because we've been working under their threshold all the time so so you've you've got to sort of bring a bit of urgency into that leading and if he freezes up near the float well um i have a feeling if i was to sort of take a hold of him and feel him i'd i'd find a little bit of brace away from the float i'd probably find there's a few laggy spots in there where he's kind of coming along um especially when you make it urgent the other thing which you have to be very uh, and, and I reckon this is also another thing that I see in a lot of people that think they've got their horse going backwards and forwards. There's a little trick that you can do to find out how soft your horse is, is go backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards and then stand your feet dead still and keep going backwards and forwards with your hand. And I tell you what, there's a lot of horses that fail that test. So when we step forward, we push our lead rope forward and we get in this kind of rhythm of forwards and backwards. And then... As soon as we stop our feet, there's about 50% of horses will just stop and start to freeze up in my hand as soon as my feet stop. So that's also a test I want you to do. Are you standing dead still when you're getting your horse urgent in that lead rope? Can you stand dead still and get get that bit of urgency of backwards and forwards? Um, and that's the bit I probably also should have mentioned in the last question is – when you stand on a float ramp, suddenly you're standing still asking a horse to step up and go backwards and forwards. You don't do a lot of you, – some you don't walk as much on that float ramp because you're asking the horse to step up and off and up and off. Um, so outside, away from it, getting them urgent in the lead rope but with it, no body language from you is so important. So that's also good to practice. Um, try the flag in different positions as well. Like if your horse is shutting it out, sometimes I just hang it over their ears a little bit and just gently, I might even just take it down and just hover it over one of their ears and they go, what's that? What's that? And then I might give it a little shake up there and they kind of get a little bit of a, what was that? And then they um, and then they get more aware of it. And then sometimes you can just gently pop the flag on your leg then and they'll go, oh, right, oh, and they'll wake up again. The flag's only there to, to, to bring their thoughts back out in the open and get them searching again so they can't block out. But I think if you work on that urgency um, and and go for a walk down the paddock as well, and and you know get to a stage that every time you pick up your lead, you push, and the horse will you know walk up fast and then jog up and things like that, and get a bit of life in that rope, and say come forwards, and then you might back up and come forward, and then stand still and get some urgency with the horse going backwards and forwards, and take them away from the float, and 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 get them really travelling along with that lead rope, and and really knowing that whatever that lead rope says, the horse is available to go with it, because um, I think. Uh, in training, we, we can get in a habit of always saying, please, can you, please, can you, please, can you? And there's a point that the horse is um, put to the test. So technically, if you look at it like this, the the school, the school, the, 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 uh, the classroom is when you're away from the float teaching it. The test is when you're at the float. But in order for the horse to pass the test, they should know the answer to the question, no matter what the question is or the request so if you're still asking the horse something like it's a like you're teaching it something um then then basically if you're still teaching your horse and then taking it to the float then obviously the horse is not ready for the test because you're still having to teach it something and that's why i say mm. you test that urgency and you and that's the test you know can you can you really follow this um i'm not asking the rope is just going that way and you've got no choice and and the horse goes don't worry i got it i know that so well and then you take them back to the float, and that's where you'll find um, they'll go a lot better. And uh, that's what I, I, I'd say with your horses freezing up a bit. And, uh, yeah, it's good to have two different questions because they all kind of lead to a similar answer. But there's a lot of other, you know, freeing up, lifting up that horse too. So ones that freeze, if you can lift until they sort of go loosen up and wake up again, because sometimes holding their head up makes them wake up a little bit, get loose, and then you can go back into leading. That's also another, you know, for some horses it's a bit of a game changer. But yeah, that that, wow. that would also you know help. 
so many fantastic tips thank you thanks mark so i've just got one last question which is sort of again it sort of runs on in a similar direction to the others but it is a little bit different it's from megan she's got a really sensitive horse um she's working with them physically and sensory wise doing lots of groundwork and feel and following through the lead which has been great with her float loading so she can get him on and off the float no problems at home however when she goes somewhere else and she's outside of that environment where he's used to there's a lot of other things going on and he starts to destinate his anxiety levels go up and this stoic attitude seems to tip out all of that learned lead work which is what you were referring to wasn't it before so like t- she took her five minutes to get him on to travel to somewhere and 45 minutes to get him home so she feels like it's sending their training backwards. Um, but once he's in the float, he seems relaxed. He's got his hind legs resting. He's licking and chewing. It's really just loading him in. Have you got any tips with that one? Um, a lot of the answers are going to be in the uh, the question that I just answered in that particular one because uh, that urgency, that wake up, that, you know, I think I think you might find there's not enough sense of urgency when you're working your horse away from the float and and in that last the the answers in the you know the last answer that I that I was talking about with the other horses uh, in both those um, but I think when you I think when you're working with your horse what I would like to think that you can actually get your horse at a slightly higher stress level um when you're at the float now i know that sounds a bit counterproductive because people don't want to stress their horses at the float it's like that calm lesson of quietly let's go in a horse float and while everything's quiet the horse kind of goes in and then he gets calm in there but as soon as there's distractions and everything else it becomes i don't really want to go in there because that's a place that you know i don't like so 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 i i think it's important that we elevate our horses just a little bit in their awareness and sometimes some horses are, are, are a lot more than what they usually are um, so we can get that little bit of sense of urgency and also get them to sort of let go of other things under pressure, like let go of destinations and stuff like that. So I would, um, you know, and it also gets them wriggling because that, that when the, suddenly your horse gets, it's got more adrenaline in the system, there's more things to destinate, it's blocking you out. So you have to, like, manufacture some of that, a little bit of that adren- adrenaline um, that you would come across in, 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 a, in a, you know, an environment that, so, so basically... The reason why we manufacture a little bit of neutral anxiety is because we can't. We it basically um, when we go to an outside environment, uh, the the then we can't control that anxiety. We can't control all the other horses galloping around, the trucks, the cars, the kangaroos, all that. We can't control that. So so we have to have somehow made some neutral manufactured anxiety in their learning environment to stimulate that bit of stress that gets them a little bothered and gets them searching and then we offer them pathways um, so so they can cope with that because they need to cope with that when they go in the float too because we won't be there as well. But And what that does is it tests your horses to see if they can go, no worries, I've got that lead rope. That lead rope gets me to let go of a strong thought. I'll follow that anywhere. Um, and then you know the horse is going to do that under pressure. So and, and because they've done that and they've found that, then you can go and, um, you know, take them different places and the lead rope and, and, and that, that idea that you're presenting to your horse is more powerful than the distraction that's bothering them. And also that idea of following that lead rope uh, is always gets them to feel better because it leads them into a more centred place. Uh, I'm not even talking about the horse float now, but just into a better feeling because they've let go of uh, some distractions that were, were, were keeping their thoughts and their feet further apart. So... I think that's why in learning, you know, I'll get in and I'll, I'll provoke a horse a little more, not to bully it, not to chase it away from me and say, you know, you're obedient, you 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 get off me. No, not it's not that at all. It's it's I'll, I'll have neutral anxieties like you know, I, you know, I might might bang the wall of the float or I might wave a flag in the air for a second and say, when that's happening, can you do this? And the horse goes, yeah, I can do that. Um, and then yeah, it just sets them up so the horse is going to be a lot lot better to control. Um, you know, when, when you have difficulty, like, like you were talking about. Keeping their focus when there's other things happening. So distracting them as you're training them during, as you go. Yeah. And yeah, just a higher level of awareness and also bringing up the anxiety so they can, you can lead them into a better place. 
Fantastic. Kim, Megan, Carolyn, I hope that helps you. Um, let us know if you have any other problems, but that um, should give you some a few things to work on by the sounds of it. Thanks very much, Mark. Thank you. Thanks, Jenny. Thanks, everybody. You can learn more from Mark online through his online training videos. Just search Mark Langley Horsemanship. There's over 380 training videos which everyone has access to with a seven-day free trial. If you like what you see, it's just $15 a month from there. That's help where you need it.